was the night before Thanksgiving, and all through the house, the only creatures who were stirring were beleaguered sports guys trying to track down the best highlights from another busy week of turkey tournament action. We start tonight with a battle for controlling interest in the Suns Classic between the only two unbeatens left. This game between Unity and West Hancock lacks subtlety. Well, it was almost like a rugby game. Right off the bat, though, Matt Deusterhaus with a nice take here, fed by the great steal from Reed Bensinger at the other side, though. West Hancock attacks as well. This time it's Jeremy Ferguson coming free on the offensive rebound and answering Unity's initial charge. Again, it's Reed Bensinger right here, channeling his inner linebacker with the steal. Eventually, the ball is going to end up in the hands of Andrew Jansen going to make the pretty score right here. Unity leading, but again, not for long. The first quarter, back and forth we'd go. Austin Hardy right here with a touchdown strike to Cord Dorothy, who not only gets the bucket, but the Band-Aid and the three-point play. Titans led by two after one. Second quarter, though, belonged to Unity. It would start with Thomas Donnelly off the easiest two points anybody would see on this night. However, West Hancock would answer yet again with a snowbird pass. This one to Paxton Harmon. But the second quarter, as I mentioned, all about Matt Deusterhaus, who was going to absolutely attack the Titans right, left, indifferent. He'd help his team build an eight-point lead. Did Mr. Deusterhaus, who I believe finished with 22 points on the night. Unity pulls off the upset by four tonight. Unity, if they can beat Central coming up on Friday at 6 o'clock, will be the champion of the Suns pool of the, uh, uh, the goalie tip-off tournament. They will face the winner on the other side of the bracket in the championship game at the pit coming up next week. Also, we can tell you that Central was a winner over Southeastern, still alive, vying for that coveted spot as they beat Southeastern 42-22. to Douglas Weiss leading the way with 12 points. Back at the Saki Turkey Tournament, Matt Hughes, Pirates looking to go 3-0, one win away from clinching the title. Jay Jones getting his team off to a good start right here. The little guard doing some great work right here. A little teardrop action for him. He's not done yet. More to come from him in a second, but uh, Grigsville Perry would answer. Levi King spinning off contact, getting the mid-range jumper to fall right there. Again, it's Jay Jones, though, doing some spin work in this game. This is pretty as well. Jones with another nice night for the Handball Pirates, but the first quarter largely belonged to Grigsville. Great interior attacking work right here by Clayton Myers, not once but twice. You will see the big guy just absolutely get dominant for a few minutes right here, and then it's Dryden Craven adding to the lead at that point for the Tornadoes as they would extend their lead to as many as five. Hannibal was having none of it, however. The Pirates would dominate the second and fourth quarters in this game. Dalton Powell about to have himself a really nice shot right here off the offensive rebound as he eventually collects it and puts it in. Zach Foss also with a nice couple of buckets in this game as the Pirates improve to 3-0 in the season. They win tonight going away in this one. 51 to 39, I believe, was your final. Other scores from the high school docket tonight. Payson Seymour comes back from 12 points down to beat Liberty 73 to 64. Elsewhere, Illini West wins its opener tonight. Jacksonville with a big comeback win to beat Centralia. 35 points there from Josh Peak. It was uh, West Central. Is anybody going to score more than 30 on Jeff Abel's team this season? Doesn't look like it. West Central wins 51 to 23. Elsewhere, West Prairie fell tonight by Havana and Beardstown, a winner over BPCA. Also, congratulations to state-ranked Monmouth, which knocks off Kiwani. 70 to 39 was your final there. When you think South Shelby football, the first thing that comes to mind is Ground and Pound, a program which has built its reputation on great running backs over the years like Ron Jaynes, Logan Schweda, Tony Hall, Ethan Harris, and now, of course, Sean Bertrand and Austin Hall. So it might surprise you to find out that the Cardinals can also lay claim to a 1,200-yard passer with 10 touchdowns to his credit. The quiet but pivotal contribution David Haithman has brought to the Bear in quest for a state title. You know, I don't think Dave gets enough credit because we're such a big run team, but, you know, when we need a pass, he always, he always comes through for us. He puts the ball usually right on the money and uh, can't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. Puts it where only us receivers can make the catch. And the thing is about Dave Payton, I mean, he's just as calm as you can get for a quarterback, and that's what you need. He's not a vocal leader. He's not going to go up there and shout and, you know, yell at everybody. He's just going to go in the huddle, get people relaxed, get people back on track, and that's what you what you need out of your quarterback. He's smart, he understands our game plan, he understands South Shelby football, and, and you can't ask more than that from your quarterback. I need somebody to step up, so I just stepped in there and just, just, just tried to lead the team. But I mean, like, Sean Burke and everyone else helped out with it and all. So I, I, I gotta give them credit, too. He's kind of a quiet kid, to say the least, but when you need the when you need him, he's there. He's there to pick you up. He'll take blame for things. And he'll take it, take the praise. He's a phenomenal quarterback. I wouldn't trade him for anybody else. And he is key to the success that we're having.